All I got to say is it. the movie section's pretty banging. Oh, nice. I... I when I, when I when it was 1981, there was some stuff I cared about here. Destroy All Monsters, which was the Japanese movie with all, all the, monsters the monsters in it, which was yes. super awesome, including the little baby Godzilla guy that shot little O's out of his mouth. No, 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 no that's oh, for the Migo. cartoon. Something like Something that. Something like that, yeah. But he went like, whoo, and little Boom. O's came yeah, out of his yeah. mouth. I never liked monster movies. Let They're not good. Let me introduce why. everyone to you guys Hello. before we get into this. <laughs> you have uh, Lydia Lunch and Weasel Walter. A real Walter. monster. Uh, yes. Weasel Walter and Lydia, the real monsters. You never like monster movies? No, I never did. Did you ever like horror stuff or like? Uh, I'm really picky about horror because it doesn't scare me enough. Right. So, um, I do like this painting above us that co- that is called "This Clown Lost a Bet." Yes, it's a now, parenthetical phrase. That juggling shows arm. real emotion. Um, I'm uh, ask Weasel what I'm like to watch a movie with. He doesn't like it. Is it rough? Well, she she if there's a victim, she starts getting angry towards. The victim because the victim's too weak. I'm like, and uh, wait, wait, wait. she wants to murder the Fight victim back. also. Oh, yeah. I want to, I want to kill the victim immediately because yeah. they don't have any skills to deal with real right. life possible danger. I'm like, right. you know, punch me, yeah, poke him in the eyes, yeah, punch, throw punch, cut his dick right. off. He has a like, penis. Hit I'm it. Like, a hard dick and a hard fist do not go well together. No. Do so I usually I'm howling during horror films. So uh, you yeah, know, yeah. do you have a favorite movie? Do you have a movie that you don't? I have a few favorite movies, and they're not necessarily... Well, it's kind of horror. In a Glass Cage, which yep. is one of Weasel's top films as well. Singapore Sling, which he turned me on to, a Greek film. Not kind of like comedy... Comedy crime. Sloppy sexy. Sloppy yeah. sexy. And I would say uh, a Spanish film called Intacto. I like very oh, much about people, an insurance adjuster who shows up at this scene of accidents, and and because he's he's run by this gambler offsite. Yep. Who okay, you've just won, uh, you know, the insurance, but why don't you double it by taking right. this bet on your life? Ah. Uh, so I like that very much. Uh, yeah, I mean, just off, I'll say those three for now. So you so you grew up in Rock, what is it not Rockford, Rockford Illinois. Rockford Illinois and you grew up in Rochester New York. Yes. So upstate New York and kind of upstate Midwest, Illinois. Midwest, Midwest trash, yeah. <laughs> Midwest trash. But you both sort of came to prominence in the major cities like New York City and Chicago. Did you have preconceived notions of those cities based on like what you watched in movies and television? Uh, no. Okay. I knew <laughs> what I was going into. I mean, first of all, since I was living in a pretty radical black ghetto where the race riots happened in front of my house taking my father's car out with helicopters crashing a few blocks away i had no fear in running away to new york at 13 on the greyhound bus yeah uh and it was kind of a dead zone um so no i mean and actually the films that defined new york for me were made in that probably same year 73 like a lot of like the scorsese films yep that that period of films that showed really the dark new york I mean, so they didn't really exist yet. Right. Um, and I certainly wasn't watching them because I was too busy trying to, you know, uh, escape up my Survive. basement bedroom window in the middle of the night and <laughs> yeah. go hang out with boys or hit the highway and try to look for uh, somebody to pick me up. They never picked me up. Because that's what, like, I would imagine, you know, like New York City of the 50s and 60s would be like, you know, those very intellectual game shows, like What's My Line and... Uh, you know, then and then like Forty Second Street, right? But early seventies. See, I just think well, the Warriors busted out. Exactly. Yeah. Well, and, and actually, I just saw the first episode of The Deuce. Yeah. Which I thought, I mean, hey, it really, I don't know how CGI depicts New York perfectly for that okay. period, and uh, that is what it was like. It in is that an period. accurate portrayal. One thing that I was t- telling this to Weasel the other day that was kind of surprising to me, and I think it was in, you know, r- r- the period right between glam and disco and punk. It's like I was listening to um, I was listening to Mick Ronson's Slaughter on Tenth Avenue, yep. and I was saying that music was really like cabaret, glam, exotic, and you thought like I hate disco music, but you thought the discos were going to be really sexy. Yeah. But I went to some I don't know thirteen or fourteen I don't know exactly that were so sleazy and so unsexy. There was yeah. one on Twenty Third Street called the Galaxy which had pillow rooms. Now, me and my 
girlfriend from across the street, 13 and 12 and 13, 13 and 14, whatever, they let us in. And it was a few months later that somebody was murdered in one of the pillow rooms. And it, this was a period of, of intoxicating sleaze. Yeah, like Plato's was, Retreat is what I heard. But, but, but worse. Ugh. Yeah, so, so nothing I mean, I don't could know. Really I never went to Plato's it. Retreat. But that still had like an air of glamour. And maybe there was some glamour. I mean, I'm talking like, yeah. Cruising. Just, yes. <laughs> yeah. Gum under the table and cum on the gum under yeah. the table. There yeah, you know. in that order. Thank you very much. Because in Chicago, I just think Bob Newhart show. <laughs> well, the first time I went to Chicago, I tried out for the role of the kid in The Shining. Red Did you? Red yeah, Rob. my parents. It was kind of a cattle call for kids. We all got in the car, and we had, like, dinner someplace <laughs> and went to this big hotel, and I did, like, a 30-second tryout where they asked me to tell a joke and asked me just some, How like, real dumb questions. How could I ever not see him that yeah, way ever? That's I crazy. mean, when he told me that, I was like, I'd rob forever. I mean, did you know what it was for? Like, you're like, this is yeah. a Stephen King's The Shining. Well, I didn't really. How old? Uh, well, probably eight? about eight or yeah. something. Yeah. But, um. Thank God you didn't get it. You'd be. <sighs> A damaged all, person. All I knew he has about that Chicago role in my mind's eye forever. Was, it just looked like a huge downtown hotel. I mean, that's yeah. all I knew. I mean, when basically, uh, when I was a teenager, me and my friends had this concept that we were going to move to New York City in a bus, and we are going to live on a <laughs> bus. And when it, when I, when it basically got to around like my senior year of high school, my dad was like, so what are you going to do? And I was like, well, me and Eric and Jeremy are going to move to New York City and live in a bus. And he goes, how are you going to get a bus? <laughs> You're like, and I immediately, hadn't thought about this piece. Immediately deflated. We went at, from red rum, red rum, jet. Oh, well, no they, bus. they suggested that I, I start taking a look at schools. And the first thing that came up was this college I went to that I don't even feel like naming because it's a total waste of <laughs> so time. So I feel about my college. Well, it was cheap. It was cheap. Yeah. And it was in Chicago. So I decided that I was going to go to Chicago and go to school. So, I mean, so you ended up there. I moved in the dorms and went nuts and met people. And then when summer came around, they're like, are you coming home? And I'm like, nope. <laughs> and Done. I, I got a record store job, you know, making like $5 an hour or whatever. And that's what I did. So. On his way. But you were saying you didn't get TV Guide. You were the family that got the free one in the in yep. the paper. But yep. your was it your aunt did your great aunt? Uh, yeah, my great aunt got TV Guide, and, and also my dad was a firefighter, so they have the TV Guide at the station. So yeah. I would go over there. You know, I'd sit and you know that would be something to do was go through the TV Guide. Which is so weird to people now that you would sit and read TV listens, well, but it was like watching the shows. My, well, back my, in the 70s, yeah. you read anything because it's yeah. so fucking boring. I mean, yeah. you, you my read a fucking box. did get box. the TV Guide, but I have to say, uh, I really didn't watch that much TV. I watch a lot more TV now than I did then. And right. first of all, because I'd say probably, like I'm, some shows I do remember watching was, I remember, and this is... This was very instructive to me. The Ed Sullivan show, but yeah. when I was like six, seven, yeah. and eight, and, and you know, so many great people were on it. I mean, the, you know, The Doors, James yeah. Brown. Adam the and the Ants are on Solid Gold this week, just so you know. Oh. I just to let you know wow. I think they probably just showed like the Prince, like uh, the Ant Rap of course, video I'm or something. About I don't think they were on it. not 81. But, yes, yeah. Um, I'm saying that by the time I was probably cha- like Dark Shadows, I liked, but. Yeah. I mean, uh, I don't remember watching a lot of TV, but by the time I was, I think, 10, I was already, like, out on, you know, rap scaling around. Yeah, you're on living st- life. You don't, I yeah. was already naughty, and by the time I was 12, I was living in the basement or the attic and uh, picking up boys at the roller rig that looked fey <laughs> and listening to David Bowie. But that, at that point, was still, like, uh, early 70s. Yeah. So only now do I come back to... TV and uh, I would go to the drive-in movies though. What would you have a, a, a favorite or remember drive-in double features well, on these? Funny up? because we tried to watch the Last House on the Left the other night oh, because it's I brutal. saw on um, well no it was so banal and boring. I'm it's like, silly. I mean I it's hard get, to watch. How yeah. did I get through the first half of this? Well probably I was making out at the drive-in, but those weird comedy cops too oh, that so show awful. up for no reason. It's like but, yeah. I mean, until it gets brutal, it's so banal. But oh uh, no, I mean it was just going to the drive-in. Yo, but. check out check out this awesome synopsis of Saturday Night Live <laughs> episode. In a show from April, Chevy Chase rescues Mr. Bill from a garbage can. Yeah. That would make me watch. This is when Lauren Michaels had quit, and they had this new cast. And this they was brought, a disaster cast yeah. from 81. They brought Chevy Chase in to try and get some credibility. It was a disaster. I love it. Gilbert Gottfried was I on it. I liked yes. when Gilda Radner did Patti Smith. Yes. That was really good, but I was... 
I was not into comedies. I was not into TV series. Uh, Weasel knows a lot about TV series. At that time, I'm like, yeah, you know, I liked I Dream a Genie when I was yeah. really small. So you were a genie, not a bewitched. I was into bewitched, but I mean, uh, not not ra- you know, rabidly. You know, I feel like people were one or the other. You were like a Munsters or Adams Family or a genie uh, or a bewitched. Okay, no, but bo- both of both, but. Uh, I no, oh, I didn't have time. Yeah, were you reading Dark a Shadows, lot and stuff? Huh? Or, Lou were you Reed a reader? On, or, or? Lou reads on Don Kirshner's rock. Concert. Lou Reed on okay. Don Kirshner. Rock concert, midnight special. I yep. lived on that shit. I yeah. did. I mean, I mean, oh, that that I I lived on that. Do you uh, you, you probably remember when the Cars were on midnight special and they had Suicide on? I yep. did did not see that, but, uh, but I did that, not see that. Was so bizarre. Th- that was amazing. Yeah, no, but certainly the midnight special, Don Kirshner's rock concert. I mean, when yeah. did those start well the cars the cars also took suicide on tour and that was like pretty much a riot causing yeah but i have to say that uh the midnight special don kirchner those are definitely two things that made me run away to new york as well i mean the new york dolls i had to run away for that because i just you know to me they were so perfectly outlandish uh i loved the the just the change from like a bearded, ugly, yeah. hippie, LA crap, eagle bullshit yep. to, you know, hot guys looking like nasty girls. And not Karen, just oh, being like, oh, what well, are you going to do really about it? Just really flaunting the sex and drugs. I'm kind of pissed because they they have um, Harlem Glo- Globetrotters go to Gilligan's Island. Yes. And they don't know that there's a cameo by Jaws in the, in the Richard movie. Richard Keel? Or Jaws the Shark. Jaws the Shark. <laughs> oh. the, the, the Globetrotters are floating on a raft and Jaws comes up. Weasel has Tim a Doll's a big fan of that. Weasel has a big issue with Jaws. Uh, uh, you like Jaws sh- or don't no. like Jaws? Uh, I, don't, I don't care for it. Oh. Well, he doesn't. He, the poster upset him very much. Physically revulses me. Yeah. I, uh, the poster itself really scared. I, I, well, I wasn't that happy when Jaws made a cameo on, on Gilligan's on a, but Gilligan's Island. Island, which you think feel like you're safe. Yeah, Gilligan's Island. Well, Harlem Globetrotters go to Gilligan's Island, so it's um, like a. I think Jaws I bet Two you was really out. Really liked so. Tina Louise. Who didn't? I did. Oh, oh, oh everyone oh, did. Oh, oh, and those people who were like Marianne. I'm like, no, oh, no, 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 Love Joseph Cotton. Niagara. Don Amici. <laughs> That's Dak Rambo. Dak Rambo's my favorite 80s actor name. <laughs> Dak Rambo. I have no idea what you two are talking about. <laughs> nah, you don't want to. Yeah. You don't want to know. Yeah, no, Love Boat, when Love Boat was on, you were living a life. Oh, uh, I was not watching the fucking Love Boat. No. I was no way. No. I, was, I was the Love Boat. Do you ever watch any of the stuff that, well, like the Deuce, obviously, which she said is accurate, but... There was a lot of like punk rock scare stuff and like sure, really like Quincy. weird, yeah, Quincy punk no, stuff. Never, never watched that shit. Never. Ever. Well, Lydia didn't like punk. She was stupid. <laughs> she didn't care about that. Uh, I'd rather hear "Go Your Own Way" as we're hearing it now yes. than hear any punk rock I've ever Mac. heard in my life, except maybe the Buzzcocks. What? There was a lot of stuff that would depict like New York at that time and stuff as as like. Just where kids would go run away and become prostitutes. Uh, that was like give me a some plot. examples. I did, uh, Facts of Life had an episode. Never saw it. Nice. Did you ever see that one? Never saw one episode. Uh, a pimp tried to turn Tootie into a. a there's no a laugh prostitute. track on that one. Usually, yeah. a seri- we we're talking about that today. Usually, the serious episodes. There's no laugh yeah. track. She's confused about laugh tracks and why they even exist at all. I am. And we were we were discussing this yesterday because I'm like I hate laugh tracks. Yeah. It's like when did they come in? Well, it's because the in all the shows that came out of radio, right, which were taped live, right, they kept that format, and then they felt like people got used to it, and then would pan it and put it. But it's uh, it's Tends very back strange. to Horace and Pete, yeah, which I really like. Yeah. the Louis C.K., Steve yep. Buscemi, Alan Alda, Jessica Lange, sourest anti-cheers comedy. Yeah, no laugh track. I can't. St- one reason I don't watch that kind. Con- I couldn't watch that kind of serial TV. It was a laugh track. So yeah, me insane. it takes you out of it. Oh, can't yeah. Stand it. And especially a show like Cheers, which is actually oh. a really sad show about alcoholics. <laughs> and it's, it's no Horace and Pete. No. I never saw one episode of Cheers, Friends, Facts of Life. Um, what did you show me? Different Strokes. They you showed Weasel. a different Mr. Bicycle Man. Yeah. Like, yeah. They made me watch that. Tim and Weasel never saw one episode. You did see a few episodes of Good Times. 
Uh, All in the Family, saw a few episodes. WKRP, never, Cincinnati. Never, never. Wow, never. Uh, Saturday Night Live, not big into that either, except for like the Gilda Radner, right. which I saw only recently. So, um, no, I'm just, you know, you're talking to the wrong person here. About do you me. feel like you missed out on anything? Like, do you feel like you want to go back and <laughs> revisit any of that stuff? Fucking lowly not. <laughs> Missed out on bad culture? Oh, no. I is there not. anything that like? Because it sounds like you're uh, you're kind of um, making your watch all this stuff. Is there anything you've watched that no, you've wait, liked? No, I only maybe watch one thing actually. Well, it's made different me strokes. Watch. I mean, that, I well, mean, that I was, was happy to that see that. Me though. and Tim Dahl are always bombarding her with garbage like that. So <laughs> we, for us, it is like pivotal, and for her, she's just like you. Uh, trust me, I, I I tune out really fast. I have a very <laughs> short. I mean, I have an, in, a, in, I have a. Um, Intense in attention, but I have a very limited attention span. Like right. Just bullshit. Right. <laughs> that that different strokes episode has disturbed was, me my whole life. Well, these two boys as well. Yeah. I mean, the other one that's not here, Tim Dahl. I mean, didn't disturb us. We they thought it was it. hilarious. Well, yeah. but here's what disturbed me. To see if this bothered you. What right. the hell is Neptune King of the Sea? Which is the game he made the kid play. <laughs> He's like, we played a game called Neptune King of the Sea, and I'm like, some comedy writer Trends. wrote that line about a kid getting abused. Trying to make it funny, Something about but I'm still sucking, like, what? Sucking dick or eating ass? Or and I'm like, what? I have no clue. Why? Why no have you clue. written it this way? Um, That's it's probably just some cynical in joke by the writers. No idea. But you had these in the 70s and 80s. All the writers were like 65 year old guys who were like, kids, whatever. They do this Neptune Cigar thing. Cigar smoking. <laughs> yeah. Assholes. Which is really bizarre. My I have to say that changed. one of my ex uh, lovers, who happened to be a motorcycle racer, also cut the hair. Of Joyce DeWitt from Three's Company. Oh, really? A show I also never liked or watched. I never really liked that show either, but she had great hair. Well, thanks to him, but I always <laughs> preferred the latter day Suzanne Summers. <laughs> the Thigh Master Suzanne Summers? No. Post. Oh. oh, oh. Present day Suzanne Present Summers. Present day Suzanne yeah, Summers. Yeah. The health fanatic. Yes. Um, I love to see an, a, an old Barbie do well. Yes. Yes, Marty. She just put out some new weird snake oil thing this week. It's like some weird, it's like vibrating food or something. It Fantastic. Was the, the craziest thing I saw, it, I saw it like part of an infomercial and it's like, this food has been vibrated and it's good for you. And I was like, this is okay. absolute well, I mean, bonkers. Look, uh, well, I mean, look, homeopathy, if we want to go to that, which does work. Yeah. It works because you have to vibrate the elemental into water so that the water absorbs the memory of the herb and it does deal with vibration so right. I don't, maybe she's doing food based on homeopathy I don't know if that's what she's doing I, I don't but know, she but might I be I mean I would any day of the week compare my thighs to her thigh master yeah just saying <laughs> I never needed the thigh master who's I, the thigh master now exactly I, I could python your neck with my thighs <laughs> I was you are Suzanne like Summers oh thank you who were your uh, crushes on TV Lydia did you or did you have any Artemis questions? Collins yeah Gomez. Yep. Not really, because I didn't like a mustache. Um, yeah. Barnabas is a good one. Uh, it was in the Marky Post from Night Court. Oh, yeah. They didn't have a hot... I don't even know what you're talking about. Hot, slightly plump... Uh, oh, no, I, I have no bump, idea. You know, pneumatic uh, sort of secretary look. Who? Yeah. What? She was in The Fall Guy as well. She played a... a who, wait, <laughs> who, wait, who, who, who are you talking about? Marky Post. I have no idea. Is that male or female? Female. No idea. Had a real 80s femolet thing going on. Uh, um, big tits. Yeah, kind of, kind First of like of all, lady. I don't die. like big tits, especially not on men. I well, don't yeah. like women with men's names, although I think I could. Uh, I have no idea what you're talking about. That's yeah. okay. She looked like she was in a hair metal band. So Maybe. that was your fantasy. Meets not Lady Die. So you yeah. like that, you too. I mean, Christina I was, Applegate. Yeah, yeah. Christina Applegate. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. I liked her when well, she was actually, young. Actually, actually, all right. Now that we're on the married with children. <laughs> Cheryl and Fenn. Yeah, Katie Seagal, I always had a crush on, yes. and Ed O'Neill. Let me just say Popeye Doyle. Yes. Forget his losing hair. Popeye Doyle. Uh, Ed O'Neill is an underrated, but look, sex symbol to me. Look, my sex symbols, they're not really from TV movie movies. I know it's perverse, but it's Anthony Perkins. Psycho? And, and Post. And Jerry Lewis, Buddy Love. His real evil, sadistic yeah. side, which he was. That period. The real Jerry Lewis. The oh king of God. comedy oh Jerry God. Lewis. Well, I know before yep. he got that old and fat, but that real sadism. I was very... And, and also that you know, Anthony Perkins would do... Mind, he'd invite people over to his house and play mind games on them. <coughs> Word games. And just right. insult and assault everybody. I was just like... 
<coughs> I loved his bi sexuality. Oh I, yeah, I, I loved everything about him. I Anthony mean, Perkins to me is just perfect, perfect. I mean, him and Jonathan Fred from you know it was Barnabas Collins had that same kind of vibeish thing going on. Where they, it was like they, they were, were creeps. Sort of, I'm a yeah. creep. They were creeps. I like <laughs> creeps. I mean, creeps. So what does it? Anybody that makes me feel less creepy, I'm very attracted to. <laughs> Marky Post, clearly not for you. As well, Marky you Wahlberg is more for me than Marky Post. Uh, you know, I, I checked out, somebody brought up Marky Post recently. I checked her out again, and, you know, there's things I like about it. I mean, it's, you know, it's Lisa was time, really into Linda Blair. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, Roller Boogie. Oh, God. When roller she was Boogie's like, good. Savage Streets, where she goes with she the She was crossbow. so hot in Roller Boogie, all that baby fat. Mm. What's the, the prison movie that she's in? Cage Teeth. Cage Teeth, that's right, yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, you got Linda Blair. Okay. I can't. I can't fault Linda Blair because I mean, we looked a lot alike when we were teenagers. <laughs> like I say, uh, come on. There you go. Only, uh, you know, I was not the one with my head spinning around. I was the devil. Right. Right. You were possessing other people. Hey, thank you very much. Yes. Um, you know it, me so well. Can we just? Met? I know it's true. Uh, but it sounds like you were discovering a lot of music through TV, which instead well, of like only radio- through the, the the rock shows. Right. Yeah. And I mean, I mean, yes, from Ed Sullivan to the rock shows, of course. Because in Rochester, they were, probably weren't playing as no, like, there were hip uh, no, stuff. no, no, wrong. Oh. Uh, so okay. many bands came to Rochester. Yeah, she was going to like Grand Funk Railroad. And no, I was not. <laughs> I was going to Mount the Hoop. I was going to Slade. I was going to oh, Slade. even Genesis. I went to Roxy Music. I went to Lou Reed. This is in upstate New York. Mick Ronson lived in Rochester, New York, for a while. Oh wow! Everything came there. I don't know why, but it did. And I went to all of it. That's pretty amazing because yes, I would never was. think of that. Well, I was, I was saying to Weasel the other day, I think I went, I think it was 12 or 13, and went and knocked on a college radio door. And the guy there like looked like, you know, Greg Allman. And I'm like, hey, oh, right. let me in. Um, can I get free tickets? And then he said, okay. And then he introduced me to a promoter. And then the promoter would just let me in free to every show. So yeah. I even saw Sully Can't Dance. Wow. I mean, oh, yeah, yeah. Front row seats. Oh, yeah, no. And I would always say to my mother, I have to go. It's for my career. And she would just laugh and go, what career? <laughs> I'm doing my, market research. You'll my see. father would take me and pick me up at 2 o'clock in the morning because I would be partying with the rock stars. My yes. career. So, I mean, no wonder you're not watching TV if that's what you're doing. Of course, doing. I'm out there you know fucking I mean? hanging out with, you know. Try and find some pills. <laughs> I didn't have far to look. I mean, yeah. actually, my Could you high, not find pills? Excuse me, yeah, but in my, my to... high school buddy, who did all the anti-drug posters, had a bottle of, I mean, this is like what you store oatmeal in, yeah. a bottle of pills that was a trough. And he was the anti-drug poster maker. So This there was were like a the lot Quaaludes of, years and like the Black was, Bettys and This was, this was like reds. even three second alls, two and alls. I'm talking, this is again 73. Okay. There were a lot of pills going around. And right. um, we loved our pills. Everyone pill. discovered Mother's Little Helpers at we that point. We loved our pills. And I wish they just made better ones now. I'm, I, I'm very <laughs> sad. I can't, I'm very sad there are not the pills that really helped me enjoy my life. Yeah. Quaaludes, Mandrax, Second Alls, Two and Alls, Placido. They don't, they don't make the good ones anymore. They're it's, just making crappy shit that hooks people and so they feel shitty. It's like, those pills make you feel real good. Right. It's that globalization of drug companies. <laughs> Oxycontin. <laughs> yeah. But you, see, you were telling me earlier you think you might have been on a cover of TV Guide with Penn & Teller, right? I do believe I was. I don't know what year. What, was it, it was videos that you did with them? Like the Cruel Tricks for Dear Friends and that kind of stuff? Oh, yeah, I did some videos with them, yeah. Back in the day, I don't know what day, and I can't remember. All I know is I did go with Peter Wolf oh, yeah. of Jay Giles <laughs> to a taping with Penn and Teller, and he was very cool. Yeah, he lives right around the corner from me. Well, please send my regards. Nice. He was very cool. Um, you know, I just released so a I'm cover. I'm a big fan of Lights Out. I yep. just released a really cover hard. album with uh, <laughs> Cypress Grove, who I record with. And I have to say, about five people have died that we covered so far. So Tom Petty, we yep. do Breakdown. This came out two months ago. Uh, we cover um, Minute Rider, Greg Allman died. Yep. We cover um, Do It Again by the least favorite band ever, Steely Dan, and yep. I mean, two of them died. We covered two years ago, Hotel California, the worst song ever written, not the way we do it. Right. One or two of them died. Right. So I'm going to make a t-shirt for our European tour that just has a tombstone <laughs> with everyone's name who we covered and crossed out who we've so far successfully Oh, you did a great cover killed. of Don't Fear the Reaper, though, and I think they're I've all alive. I've always done covers. Yeah, yeah well, well, well but that, was, that was before I had the curse. Before you were them. cursed? Yeah. No, before they were cursed. Hey, that's what we had to the set, Don't Fear the Reaper. Go ahead, buddy. <laughs> I love that song. Me too. I love it too. Yeah. I'll that's, talk to I, Tim. I, excuse me. I also covered... 
that smell by Leonard Skinner. Yes. That only took me 10 years. It took me 10 years to find somebody brave enough to do that smell and also 10 years to find somebody brave enough to do Hotel California with me, but there we go. So when you do those covers, are they songs that you think are... Hated. That you hated? Hated. Okay, so they're not like, this could be a good song if I could fix it. Hated. Hated most of these songs. Heard them too many times. I mean, especially Hotel California. Yeah. And I have to say, it's not like we contorted it or twisted it. We actually do it very traditionally, but I own it then. And then you actually hear the lyrics, because I'm not doing... All of these songs have great lyrics. All of them. I mean, that writer... Excuse me. I cover Bon Jovi. Plays the glory. Fucking good lyrics. I'm sorry, but... um, I never drew first, but I drew first blood on the yeah. devil's son. Call me young gun. Uh, they're just good lyrics. So there were songs we never heard the lyrics to, although we heard a million times. We grew to hate. I reclaimed. Yes. There you go. <laughs> I mean, steely fucking damn. Yeah, I could never. <laughs> no, I would do a video. I would do a, a audio jukebox, and I'd play it for people. I go, do you know what this is? They're like, until it came to back. Check. Yeah. Do it again. Yeah. I'm like, it's a song about gambling. Yeah. Do you get it? Wheels turning round and round. Speaking of like, Chevy Chase, he played drums for them. Well, I don't Barf. Yeah. I don't give a shit about it. <laughs> hate Steely Dan. I could Chevy never Chase seems like a problematic Steely Dan guy. And hate Chevy Chase. Like yeah. many so, comedians, Chevy Chase seems like a hateful, hateful yes. asshole. Yes. I've never met anyone who had a nice thing to say about him, even people who are friends of his, ostensibly. Um, but yeah, just horror story after horror story. But that's most comedians are terrible people. Well, uh, I mean, most people are terrible people. That's and true. most people are terrible comedians. So that's true. Dumb. So it all works. There's the Venn diagram of these things. I like Stephen Wright. I always have. Stephen Wright's great. Also lives not far from here. He's a Boston I wish guy. I he was coming to the show tonight. Yeah. I mean, I consider myself a, a, a dark comedian that nobody, you know, they're, they're, they fear my punchline because usually it means I'm punching their face. Uh-huh. Yeah. But it's the same, like I always, one of the things I always say about horror and comedy have the same exact uh, structure. It's just a different punchline. And it's like, you're just, you're making someone react the way that you want them to react. If it's like you, you know, however you do it. So you watch way more now. Is there anything else you watch besides The Deuce and, or anything well, that yeah, you're just yeah, like okay, addicted to? I like Bloodlines a lot because I really like Ben Mendelsohn, the Australian actor, but especially yep. his 14 year old son. Okay. And Bloodlines, I love, love that. Um, I have to say, I did like, and this is kind of cheesy, but I mean, you know, if I can, because I only have time to binge watch, so if it takes, if I have a Saturday off, I'll binge watch. I did watch, um, Little, is it Big Little Lies? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, I mean, Andrew, is that his name? Andrew Sk- Skarsgård? Yes. I yes. mean, the relationship between him and Nicole Kidman, I don't give a shit about her, but I like that they showed the psychokinesis of people in sexually battering relationships right. that cannot that are addicted to it they really showed it in a good way so I have to and also Reese Witherspoon playing a, well, I'm also not a fan of these actresses but showing something really important to show right that, that I have to give it the, the writing is excellent and they can show that now and like, they can show that no no I mean go back to Big Little Lies those scenes were so incredibly perfect with Andrew right. Skarsgård they were really good. Um, what else did I like recently? Um, I liked, oh, I loved Legion. Oh, yeah, yeah. Legion. I mean, anything, I mean, that, that was so, the pop art direction of that was so good. Yeah. And that it takes place in a psychiatric, and I love the fact that, are you psychotic or maybe it right. all is real? And right. Uh, what really sold me on that show was, I think, the first episode where he's in his kitchen having to freak out if everything comes tornadoing out of the cupboards and yeah. it was so beautifully done and it was so unexpected and you have an unreliable was... narrator too which TV never did to us for years it was always very safe and you I mean, almost can't trust it I, I even like the um, OA OA the OA I don't think the I've OA. watched the OA I see, I'm stumping you the OA is about this girl who been she was she was kidnapped. She was blind, but it was this guy who collected this doctor who collected special people and had them in this glass cage in his basement. But basically, he was doing experiments on them to try to find like he would he would drown them almost to the point of death. But he was trying to hear the sound that's right beyond the point of life and death. Oh, so it was like the butterfly collector Col- meets like the a- the affix. Or something. Yes, and also, but th- so there's these four kidnapped hostages and they start developing this 
movement based on trying to break through a dimension which is going to help them understand how to fucking get out. No, it's very right. complicated. Which is like a super metaphysical thing for a TV yes. show. It was super complex. So it had like kidnapping, it had victimization, it had, yes, you're, I know you're... All our favorite things. And it was, but I didn't like that at the end it ends with like a schoolyard shooting bullshit. But, yeah. but I mean, that, that's also true, but it was very interesting um, because, again, it was unexpected. Right. But Legion, I think, is like one of the top... And I don't like things based on cartoons or super comics. Yeah, it was but, a comic, but that was but, a weird, that was an interesting But this character. is based on, I also like the idea of psychosis as a parasite. Yeah. Yeah. Because we are all infected and afflicted. Yeah, which is uh, kind of scientifically backed up with a lot of the DNA coding they've done with viruses. That's why and I am things. the sanest person I know because I am pretty much free of bacterial infection, especially vaginosis, unlike some of the groups that are performing with us. Today. Yes, we did hear a detailed story of back pain caused by vaginosis. I, I feel that, you know, I am not full of, par- oh, I feel that, we're, of course we're all full of parasites, but we are the parasites. Yeah. And so, embrace do you have a favorite uh, TV theme song? Probably more you than Lydia probably can. Oh, I think of it in the classic it. age, but oh, I'm he curious sings what one he all says. The time in tour uh. with Retrovirus. Come on, you know what you sing. <laughs> what do I sing? Red Cross covered it first. Oh, Good Times theme, yeah. Good Times theme. I like I like the Red Cross. Uh, I have a live bootleg of Red Cross doing the Good Times theme. Weasel, you always do. And it's uh, it's very sublime Let's because it's. Uh, Sung by their rhythm guitarist Robert Hecker, who's no yeah. longer with the band, and he has this sort of cracking falsetto, like ah, it's really like. Let's hear it. No, I don't want to. Okay. I don't. I want to hear the fucking Red Cross. There's version. one line in that song that I have no idea what the lyric is, and it's when they go, uh, "Hanging in a John," and I'm like, "Is it hanging and enjoying? Hanging in a John? Hanging, hanging in a job day. line? I have no Temporary idea what it is." Temporary blow job. Yeah, yeah. Good time. Yeah, that kind of thing. Yeah. You know. Yeah, no, it's good. Good um, time's a good I one. Come out with I just like the Red Cross version. I think it's rather good. But I don't know. I mean, I, I know a lot of words to a lot of theme songs, but... Uh, uh, I was not very uh, happy about the Steve McDonald diss to me, like saying I tried to chicken hawk him when he was 16. Oh, first of all, he was too old for me at that well, point. Well, we played a gig with him. You well, if, if you look like Linda Blair, he would be into that, given Red Cross's subject well, we just, matter. We just played a gig with him. Did you ask him Where? about this? Where? Oh, yeah, he was we, in the Melvins. Yeah, but I mean, I'm not interested in him. He's not 14 anymore, so I don't know. <laughs> Did this get back to you in the grapevine? Bob told me. Oh, because Bob was schmoozing. Bob was saying oh, like, yeah. something like, oh, yeah, Steve McDonald was saying you used to try a chicken hawk. And I'm like, well, well he was how old? I mean, if he was 16, I must have been like, if he was 14, I must have been 17. Is that chicken hawking? I think like, that's, much if, you're, too old. if you're all under 18, I think it's, you know, not chicken hawking. I mean, look, if you're a female, is it chicken hawking? Not, not by American society standards. Well, yes, it is, because all these teenagers are getting busted now. That's true. Women. That's sure, true. Sure, blame the women, you guys. I'm telling you, look, what 14-year-old doesn't want to have sex with his teacher? Come on. Hey. Well, it depends on what your teachers were like. Well, just call me here. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Call me, uh, teach. Lunch. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Chicken hawking. Whatever. Well, look, he'll never have that happen to him again. Let's it's true, say. unless he starts aging in reverse. Uh, he won't. And, you know, I asked him about his son. <laughs> he didn't respond. Was he married to, like, the chick from that that dog or something like that? I have no idea. Was he? Or is that his brother? They'll marry up. They'll marry yeah. up. They're twins, right? Yeah, they got, like, yeah. a band with their two wives in it. He's married to some rock girl. Very Fleetwood Mac. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't do think they do as much coke as Fleetwood Mac. Well, I don't should. think anyone could. Uh, uh, I, I, good point. I, I well, she. To, but it never happens. <laughs> careful there. It's just not enough out there. You like, still have a nose. Anywho. I mean, I, look, look, every, I mean, every night I think, like, who will wheel the straw? <laughs> I'm just saying, nothing. Do you watch anything now? Uh, I watch 10-year-old comedy stuff because I don't, I don't watch TV, so I always find out about it 10 years later. So. Like what? Eric Andre, Tim and Eric. Oh, yeah, yeah. Snuff Eric Andre's Box, a Boston guy. Started Snuffbox is great. All that fucking crap. I mean, yeah, usually British I wait stuff. for somebody to recommend something, and then I go in deep. I love Eric Andre's show. Yeah. I think that's one of the best things I I've ever seen I wish he would have life. invited me on, because you know what? I would have destroyed him before he destroyed me. Oh, that would still, be oh, yeah. great. There's still time. I'm I can put you in touch. Oh, please. Yeah. Tell well, me. he's moving to New York. Yeah. The show's over. Yeah, but Eric started here. He, he start, used to go to the I, open mics. I'm sure he doesn't know who I am, but you know what? You should. Yeah, I'll, I'll yeah. put in a word. 
Oh God, it's the, I love Eric. I mean the the. I would just walk up and smash him in the face. And be over. Oh. He'd be into that. I mean, I kiss. I the kiss. Christmas, I him. New Year's Eve spooktacular is one of the greatest things I've ever seen in my entire life. I mean, <laughs> it's fucking wall to wall destruction. I'm amazed that it, it got made. I, I, oh yeah, it's anarchy. It's just like how. Well, who, I mean, how do you script that? Yeah, it's you so can't. fucking nuts. Yeah, it's so yeah. nuts. That's my like. That's my dream television show. Just, just chaos. chaos and destruction. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Love it. Yeah. So that's it. I don't watch TV. Yeah. I download shows I want to see, and then I sit at the computer all day furrowing my brow and trying to think of my next move. That's the way to do it. That is the way to do it. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't... I watch a lot of news. Um, I watch TV when I've given up on life. <laughs> well, but he's on the computer all day, so that is kind of a different kind of TV. But right. I mean, I watch a lot of news, not as much as I used to, but I, I like disaster porn as a backdrop. Right. And uh, I get much joy out of what's happening because I just... I'm, just because you feel like you're keyed in, or well, no, 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 because it's the way I've always said it fucking was. So it's like she's no really into the to... show. What's happening? Oh yes, yeah, aren't we all? No, I, I like um, uh... real people. So it justifies how you feel about. No, things, I or... like Young Turk Network. Yep. I like RT Russia Today, but I watch a lot of the news channels too. It's like I like to have. I like to watch a lot of news. I, I used to read about 15 newspapers a day. I'm not right. so obsessive anymore, but. I mean, I need statistics for a lot of my spoken word stuff, but right. I just, I love the way the world is going because it's always apocalypse now to me. So it's like, yeah. this is nothing new. It doesn't take it's much exaggeration. Yeah. It is nothing new. This is old school, old news bullshit. So you find so it kind I'm of comforting, sort of yeah, almost? Absolute yeah. backdrop. I mean, it is like, it's disaster porn. I, I'm kind of like mentally jerking off, going, <laughs> I'll drop the big one, motherfucker. I'm just going to do my de facto night flight uh, shout out. Yes, absolutely. Without cable, uh, I would have found out about good music a lot slower. But when yeah. I was 13, I saw like the Residents, Third Reich and Roll on TV, and Urga Music War, and Ladies and Gentlemen, and Fabulous yeah. Stains. The complete and, truth about de evolution I saw on Night Flight. Yeah, you know. I mean, Church of the Sub Genius. Liquid Sky, like all that fucking garbage. Oh, yeah, Liquid so. Sky. Well, when you're, Mondo, New York. Yeah, when you're 13 years old, I so, mean, basically you're like, oh, I see. I don't have to listen yeah, to Yeah, this Warner. is USA Network used to have an all-night show called Night Flight that showed, like, Super John important. Waters movies and Super just, like, important. stuff uh, that you would cable, never... I, original cable I remember is the Reverend Gene Scott. Oh, yes. Chicago, and I kind of consider myself an evangelical, so <laughs> I'm going in that direction. Yeah, I mean, that stuff is fascinating as well. Well, thank you guys so much for chatting TV. This no has problem. been great. I appreciate it. Thank you. It's been great, Ken. Thank you for contacting us. You're quite welcome. I tried to discourage you at first, but you wouldn't hear of it, so that was great. It's quite all right. It's quite all right. Thank you.